I spent a little bit of time today working with my new Osmo Pocket camera, trying to put it on my helmet. Looks like a geek, but I kind of like how it worked out, so I decided to take a ride and give it a try. So here's what I did. I decided to go up Highway 24 towards Woodland Park, and if I have the time, I always love coming out through Garden of the Gods. That's it off to the right. Oh, and Flying W Ranch is open again. It's been closed for like five years since the fires. The garden is packed. Uh, normally the police don't need to come in and handle traffic, but they did today. Make everybody turn right. There used to be a lot of Segway tours in the park, but those have gone away in favor of electric bikes. Those are a lot worse because they want to be out into the traffic, slowing everything down. The main parking lot was packed with cars. People just going round and round trying to find a parking spot. I'm glad I just get to zip on past. This is my favorite photo spot in the park. Love those red rocks in the background and all the trees. I could probably fit in if I wanted to, but I try not to take up the time when it's packed and deprive some tourist of the chance to get a picture. They don't get to come back two or three times a week. I was really surprised we didn't have a traffic jam with people gawking at the deer. The car ahead of me just took one picture, and off we went. I would never come to Garden of the Gods, take my helmet off, and just meander around at slow speeds, because it's so pretty. I'd never do that. Helmets are important. This is the other big tourist spot. Ship Rock or something like that. Everyone wants to get underneath and get a picture holding up the rock, just like that lady's doing. Highway 24 was packed with cars, so I didn't take much video. I did stop at McDonald's and grab me a burger. And then this is me out on Highway 67 towards Deckers. Just a fantastic road. Nice, windy, but pretty high speed. I thought I got some video of the turn at Deckers and the parking lot full of bikes. There's a restaurant and an ice cream shop there, but I guess I didn't. I stopped to eat my hamburger up through this area in these nice, cool pine trees. I really want to stay in this campground sometime, but it is always packed, right alongside the creek. See, what did I tell you? Campground's full. Fishermen all out through the creek. And this road just meanders for about 13 miles back through here. There's also some tubers. And there were a few people just wading down the creek. No wait, this is the west. That's a river. Right about here the South Platte River starts going through private land, forcing all the tubers to get off. Wouldn't it be great to have some land out here? Highway 67 turns right just up here and it goes through about seven or eight miles of dirt. I've never taken it and I don't think I ever will. Instead, I just continue right on down the river. This is the South Platte River. We've finally gotten far enough away from Colorado Springs that not every parking lot is packed. See? Half empty parking lot. There is some new construction out here. Hmm, I wonder if I could build a house.
we're no longer in private land, but now we're so far away that people don't seem to bother driving out here. It all clumped back up at the beginning of this road. It just continues winding along. Gorgeous. I'm not in love with the campgrounds out here. Just wide open and no trees. Katie and I stayed here once and our tent just about blew away. So instead of that turn back five miles ago, I take this turn. It's only about three miles of dirt. It is a little steeper, but it's so much shorter. This Jeep freaked out with all the warning signs. It stopped up ahead and turned around. The road nearly looks like it's paved. It is really well packed and very flat. The biggest problem is that center stripe of gravel. And I'm on a trike, so I have one wheel to each side and my center drive wheel is right behind me. There's that Jeep freaking out. About half a mile in, we start some climbing. It's really not that steep at all. But you see a little bit of drop off to the right. About three quarters of a mile in, we get this hill. I think the sign said it's 8%. It really doesn't seem that bad to me. I have been down it when it was a little muddy and it got a little scary. But I much prefer going up. About a month ago, I came down this on the spider. It was a little bit wet and a little bit scary, but not bad been up it about four times now on the spider and I came up it many times on the old v-twin never did bring the gold wing out this way I didn't know what I'd do if it ever fell over on me once you're at the top of this hill you're actually on a bus route so this road is always well maintained real easy for the next two miles. Remember when I was talking about that center stripe of gravel? Uh, I spun pretty good here coming around this corner, but you can't hardly even tell it just spun. This is the end of the dirt at Sprucewood. Now there's a nice little restaurant. This is a great lunch ride, but it's about a three hour lunch ride out and back and have lunch. I've done it a few times. This is really some of my favorite road to ride. I shot a lot of video and just had to toss it because there is so much gorgeous riding through here. Lots of twists and turns, but it's all pretty high speed and it's a lot of fun. If you notice the windshield disappear every now and then, it's because I'm actually standing up. I can stand up on the spider and I don't feel scary at all. Couldn't do it on the Goldwing. ATVs aren't street legal here in Colorado can't license them. But this guy whipped out onto the road behind me and followed me up to the Rampart Range Road. And he kept up with me at about 45, 50 miles an hour, which would have made me a little nervous. Here we can see down off the top of the mountain towards the flatlands. But like I-70, you might think you're off the mountain, but you're not. There's still another four or five miles worth of windy road to get down.
Here we finally drop off the last of the mountain. I turned right off of Highway 67 onto Highway 105. Now you can see I'm headed south with the shadows coming from my right. This is a great ride and I do this all the time as a big loop. This white SUV in front of me was filled with teenage boys who kept sticking their heads out the windows and waving, including the driver. This ranch here has got famous for horses or something. Quite often it's just packed with cars for horse shows. Here's some road art that I never seem to have the time to stop and look at. Maybe sometime. Palmer Lake and O'Malley's is one of my favorite places to do for a quick lunch. Just around the corner is the Rock House Ice Cream Shop. I bring the grandkids here all the time. I was feeling the pressure to get home, so what do I do to combat that? Turn off and meander through the town of Monument. All these cars were lined up waiting for the train to go past. I don't trust them. If I keep going straight, I'll get on the freeway. But nope, I'm going to turn right and meander my way home. Thanks for watching.